uh, is my screen visible? Okay, I mean, okay, okay, that's it. So, so I'll write everything in a single file, which I, I use this pin code info data as a, some data, whatever the, I'm going to do with the input as pin code info dot CSV. Okay. Uh, so I'll write everything in the script dot sketch. So whatever I do, uh, you can see it on the right side. Uh, the output will be coming here. Okay. So uh, I'm not going to talk about the initial first one to four weeks. Okay. Uh, I'll start with the conditional and looping, especially what we have seen in the week five. So uh, initial things, uh, we already know this is called the SCAR bracket, which we use it for conditional evaluation, okay? So the same thing, uh, you can use the same with the uh, if conditional method, okay? or if you can, if you want to do only one thing, you can use, simply use the SCAR bracket. Okay? So can you repeat your last statement, sir? Uh, I kind of missed it. Uh, okay. So if you want to run a bunch of things, if the condition is true, let's say, uh, if the condition is true and you want to run a bunch of uh, commands, then better what you can use is a full if statement. Okay, this is what you can use. But if you want to simply run only one thing, so you can use like okay. so these two alternative ways. But there is a uh, there are some issues with this code I wrote. Okay, so generally, uh, whenever you use a single square bracket. We have to surround the variable by a double quotes. Uh, I, why I am saying because let's say uh, here there is no issues with that. But if the A was not defined, then it will result in an error. Why it is resulting in, in an error? Because uh, how the bash, I mean, it's not a bash, it's a POSIX shell conditional. It is interpreting is because uh, this uh, dollar a, it's a refer the value of a is null. I mean no string. Okay, actually it, it is interpreted as like this. Okay, if I save it, you will get the same error. Okay? It says unary operator expected. So what it's saying is, uh, I gave a binary operator, but I gave only one operator. Let's say that's why it's saying instead of binary operator, we say unary operator. If I put dollar here, it, it says the same because there is or uh, it will resolve into null string, nothing into it. So, but if you put a semicolon over it, it will understand 
it's an question and uh, so when do we use the double quotes uh, i mean double square brackets a uh, double square bracket it's like a it's a hash future uh, double square bracket okay uh, there are some the double square bracket have the uh, same feature as i mean uh, it's like a super set of the bash square bracket okay uh, okay uh, you asked your question was when do you, you have to use the bracket right let's say uh, if you want to do some uh, like a regular expression validation okay let's say i'm going to convert this into a regular expression validation okay uh, I in, I install some interpreters. Okay, so that will I install some linter. So that will give some things for me. Uh, otherwise, uh, so it will not work. Okay, so it, it says binary operator expector. Uh, why? Because in this square bracket does not support the regular expression validation. So we can use double square bracket. So this regular expression validation is meant it was false because a was not different okay. uh, now it is, uh, let's say i'm going to write no uh, a very important thing if you are writing a regular expression you should not give double quote or single quote in it you have to write a plain regular expression like here. Uh, it will accept a value from one to seven. This delta symbol we use for the regular expression only, right? Which one? Equ uh, yeah, equal to then tilde symbol, sir. Yes, this is for regular expression validation only. But the value was uh, within the shell variable. Yeah, value in the shell. Correct. Uh, the thing is, if you use a double square bracket, then it will result in an issue. Uh, why why it is becoming an issue? Because uh, now the double square bracket, I mean, sorry, uh, now the double quote itself considered as a regular expression. That is how yes. the bash will interpret it. So, okay. so, uh, so you have to remove the double quotes. But alternate way is you can say. You can store it in some like a in a variable, in a single quote or double quote of your choice, but you can refer it to that here. Now this will work. So if I give eight, it will get rejected. Uh, did you get it? Yes, sir. I got it, sir. Thank you. Okay. Uh, uh, one another thing. If we use a double uh, square bracket, uh, as I explained before, right? If the A is not defined, then it won't be an issue because a bash interpreter will understand this is a null string. So uh, if you use a single interpreter, uh, the double quote is very mandatory. It's always a good practice if you use a double quote. Uh, also, if you write something like a, which has a space in it, you must have to give a double quote. Otherwise, it will treat that as a separate command. If I say a uh, equal to x space y now the error which i got was y command com the command named y was not found uh, whenever you wrote something like this a equal to y means uh, the next uh, argument or something like a, a word or something uh, after a space is a command it's a if i write echo dollar yeah, what will be the output you are expecting? Just a rough guess.
Okay. Uh, maybe it's it. Yeah. Uh, at the same time, you can do like this. Okay. Okay, it's a request or shell variable, so it will not work. But if it's a script, then it will work. Uh, so what you can do is, when you pass a value to the uh, script, you can use the env command, and you can assign value into it. So I'll create a one to that which. I haven't assigned the value yet, but I am trying to interpret it. So if I execute the same, I'll put a code block here so that uh, it will give, you an, give me an out and a new line character. But if I do like a equal to Then this will work. If I say yes, I'll be yes. The same, uh, you can use uh, EMU also. That's what you But it will not work with Echo. Uh, why? Because uh, Echo is a shell built in, which is a echo, type Echo. It will say Echo is a shell built in. But if I, use, if I ask for like, To say okay, it says uh, it says, but it's a sh shell script, so that will so it's not a file, so it will not. It's, these are some basic things. Uh, this will come in handy when you want to debug stuff. Uh, so, one other thing which you Notice uh, the unary operators like uh, F So what does this unary operator do is it will work with a single a single square bracket and double square bracket. Uh, if the file is the present, it will return true. I mean like a return an exit status of zero. Uh, if it's not present, it will return some uh, exit state that will change the output. So similarly, uh, this hyphen D, it will check there is a file exist and that file is a directory. Uh, in Linux, you can say file and directories are said interchangeably, okay, uh, refer interchangeably. But generally, directory itself, a uh, it itself a file which stores uh, reference to other files. Okay, so it will say check for whether it's a directory or not. If you give a double dot. It will say accepted. Uh, why? Because uh, I'm referring to the parent directory. Same way it works for single data store. Okay. So you can use LC first one.
So if you use else or elif, uh, then you have to uh, write a then after it. Or okay? right, you have to suppress it and you have to write a then. So that is important. You have to keep in mind. But if it's a simply yes, it is not required. So I wrote a function like if it's a directory, uh, the kind of first condition check for it whether it's a directory. Uh, if it's not a directory, then we are checking for whether it is a file. Uh, if not, both conditions are failed, then uh, we are printing the else statement. The dot is a directory. So if I give a start, uh, it, it says neither directory nor. Uh, only because it gives the, the entire collection, so it is not existing. So next, uh, we so we have seen the conditional, and next we'll see the loop. I start with a while. Loop. So. While it starts with a command name while, and uh, we have to give one another keyword called do and what and done. So whatever you have written, written between do and done will be executed until the condition is true. As, I mean, as long as the condition is true. So I wrote an infinite while loop. Okay. So and uh, you can find the live session in that the YouTube channel named SC two thousand one. So I wrote an infinite while loop, but I give a breaking condition. If the a was equal to ten, the code will break. So okay, the I mean the while loop will break down. Break and exit out of the world. So it's not a good way if if we say equal to, but it's a really good way if we say some greater than like an inequal to. Okay. Why? Because if in some edge cases, if that value was exceeded or skipped, it will go on like in some problems. Otherwise, you can give the same condition here as well. So in this case, we don't have to use the double quotes around the dollar a, right? Uh, yeah. In this case, it's not required because a is already defined. Yeah. So it's not required, but better if we use a POSIX. I mean, here we are using bash, so no issue. Okay. okay. So here the while loop got stopped. Uh, why? Because I said the uh, that a should be greater than 10. Initially, it was zero. So the condition was uh, initially false. So it haven't started. I'll say less than equal to 10. 
then it will okay, let's continue. So this is how we use while loop. Uh, there is one another loop named until. The syntactically both are same. But the way it works is a little different. So until the condition is false, uh, the while loop works. Okay. If the condition is uh, true, the while loop will execute the block converge. But until if it's a false, it will execute converge. When it becomes true, it will stop. The same thing. We can use the same for until as well. So one another big use case for while loop is uh, like you can read files easily with the while loop. So in that case, what you can do is you can give read line. You can use the R line. So this is how you can really uh, read a file really fast. So you can do all the manipulations here. How this will stop after reaching a, a end of the line? Because uh, if you are reading a file after certain uh, it will become, it will return a, like a, okay, a demonstration for it. ABC and I put in the file and ABC. Okay, if I say okay. I'll put something. Uh, if I read the same file multiple times. I will get the null strings. Okay. So it, this is how it will start. The while loop, while loop will start after once the uh, reading is done. Okay. Uh, even next things as well. Okay. So you can nest the while loop as well or any loop as well. Uh, the one another way of doing the same thing is okay. but it's not a really good way of reading because uh, when you use a uh, when you use a dollar and executing a subshell and get the value, uh, the printing will have some issues. In the way. Uh, 
uh, what you are saying is it is not the entire line. Uh, why? Because uh, when you read like this, uh, all the space separated value will become separated as a node. Uh, because it will trade that as a kind of like an array kind of thing. So one way this thing works. Okay. Uh, if you put a double quote over it, then you will get the entire line. So this is how you can prevent it. But always a better way, uh, you can use the while loop. So one another thing is, if you are reading from a file, so an efficient code would do like this. I'm the file. So either you can do like this or anything which requires standard input. Uh, one another way you have known that gap in the file name and pipe it to the summary. This also works, uh, but it's not a always an efficient way. So if it's a single command, you can use the directly give the standard input through redirection. Uh, these are all about roots. Uh, you can use uh, sequence uh, for doing some operation for some number of times. Okay. So you can use like uh, break to break the loop and continue to continue the sum loop. So the continue will uh, prevent the execution of the blocks, which is next to it. Uh, if you see here, the file was not here. So if it's, if this condition is there, uh, true, then the next block will not execute because of this continue. Okay, any doubt in the bash programming? So next I'll start set. Uh, so it's a yeah, good idea if you use a sequence instead of uh, bash curly braces, because you can use the thing. Uh, but the thing is, the curly brace is not flexible. Okay. If you want to generate some combination around it, you can do it. Uh, but other than that, uh, you cannot assign a number into it, assign a variable like that. It will not work like this. So in this case, you have to use two. Uh, can we have this uh, step by where you can get like one, three, five, um, you can execute the CQ? Oh, so, sorry, I'm not able to get it. Okay, can we can we generate odd number or even number for example? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can we can give skip values. Let's say I can say I'm going to start with a zero to ten. Okay. So I can give the skip values like after every two two steps. Okay. Uh, Should be zero two and 
starting and the step value and the final value. So in this way, it will generate the uh, even numbers. In this way, it will generate the odd numbers. It will work with um, negative values. Okay. I, I don't think it will work. Oh, yeah, it will not work with the floating point values. It will work only with the integers. Uh, then, okay, uh, one thing I can do. So, one important thing we have to use, it should be much handy, is using the shell variable manipulation. I haven't done the standard input. What is the relief minus sign that we do? Okay. Uh, to use a minus R, the interpretation will be a little different. Uh, it's like uh, when you want to read something like a new line character or something. At that time, you have to use the this minus sign. Okay. Uh, it will does not allow the backslashes to escape any characters. Uh, let's say if there is a tab character in it, it will be. Uh, uh, if you didn't use the uh, hyphen R, it will not. It will skip it. It will interpret it. As tab or as uh, back key. Uh, it will interpret uh, if you use hyphen r, it will interpret as a slash t. If you didn't use it, it will simply interpret as a tab. It's like a space character. Okay. Uh, let's say I'll try that. So what I have done is I wrote a, a tab B in ABC. You can see the U tab. Simply if I say read line. It will read as a simple space. Okay. So if I do the uh, it should read like a But uh, whatever I said, that is correct to me. 
so uh, it will not allow backslashes uh, to escape that's a yeah Okay, one I so I have created this file. So this is how if I read with R, if I didn't read with it will be like this. You got it right. So it will, if I use R, then only it will interpret the backslash escape to characters. That's all. So Okay, we'll come to this part. So better uh, if you learn only this part, like the shell variable manipulation with this, uh, removing things, it will be much handy. Okay. So I'm removing everything from the right, uh, whatever it starts with the space. So you can see all the, if this was the West Bengal, so West space Bengal it starts with West space Bengal. So, so whatever after space, everything is cut on. I can do the inverse of it by removing the initial part using this. Uh, you can remove only the shortest match from the beginning uh, and longest match using the double hash. Also, you can do like a uh, substitution. I will substitute all the lower case E with upper case E. You can see the lower case E was substituted. For first, only the one substitution, you can do like this. One, only one. Okay. I will go into a set script. Uh, no doubt in bash, right? I will go to the set script now. Uh, if you give a plain thing, it will work like echo. If you didn't give anything to the set script, it will work just like an cat statement for the file. Let's say I want to print only the first line. Okay. So what I will do is I remove every line from two to the end. Okay, the first line was the header line. Let's say I want one uh how does it work says you have like a pattern space and axillary space okay so it will take the read one line or one record per se and into a line pattern space and it process it and dumps the output okay so by default uh, it will read the file and prints the output okay to prevent it you can you have to use the file in option named n that will print the prevent the default printer in this case i can i'll come in this out i'll say one p it will print only the first line okay, this is the command uh, any doubt here Minus okay, you didn't understand the minus sign, right? Okay. Uh, let's say I'll take only a part of it. Okay. 
Okay, I am going to take only the first 10 minutes of the encoding. Uh, is the screen, is the output is visible? Okay. So first, initially, I'm not going to write anything. Okay. So these are the 10 lines. The line number one, line number two, line number three, and so on. Okay. So when I wrote one page, what does it mean is uh, the address. Okay. Next, uh, I'll explain the shell parts. Uh, initially, you, you can define label and you can give address and you can give command and command parameters. Okay. Uh, this label is not, uh, it's an optional one. And address is what I wrote, one. One refers to the first line, okay? Uh, the command is like a, uh, which I gave P. P stands for print. So what, is, what does it do is print line number one. Okay. So parameters are the extra thing which is, which is related to the computer. So what you can see here is the first line was printed twice. Okay, uh, which is because by default set loads one value to some process set, process on whatever we are doing. Okay, and it gives that to the standard output. When I say print, it will do give the stand, it will give the output one more time. Uh, you you are able to understand this part, right? No, sir. It's done. No, sir. Can you repeat again the last statement? Okay, okay. So I'll remove this one, okay? So I simply give print. Uh, nothing in it. Okay, sir. So what it does is it did like a catch statement. It, it is clear, right? It works like a cat. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, that is clear. So what, what cat do is it takes the standard input and give it to standard output. No processing, nothing in between. Take standard input, give it to standard output. That is what cat do. But uh, what does the set do is it takes standard input line by line, okay, and it do some process in that line, and it gives the processed line to the standard output. Okay, here I haven't done any processing. Okay, so it works like a take the standard input and put it out. Uh, when I say print, it is a one another action. I'm saying I have one line. Anyway, I'm going to give it to a standard output. Now I'm giving a command that print the same line. Now. So along with the default uh, sending that line to standard output, it execute this command as well. Yes, got it, sir. Okay, the equivalent code which I can write like this while read length. So the above two codes are exactly equivalent, okay? Just like uh, like a cat. Uh, I'm using a while loop. I'm getting the standard input from here, okay? I, so that I don't need to pass the file name here. So I'm reading the while loop, read the line, and I'm simply echoing it out. So these two are exactly the same. Okay? Let me see here. 
so uh, what does when i say right one p what am i doing here is let's say some i, I have some line counter which is zero may read the first line it will increment to one then i'm saying yes i write it like this one Okay, now that I got uh, the name, the line one twice in both the components. This is the output from set. This is the output from uh, this while loop. Okay, uh, this line one print, if it's line one, that is the same way I wrote it in the back here. Uh, Ratish? Uh, is it clear now? Yes, sir, it is clear. Uh, my doubt was like uh, minus h should be used only when we do a key command or any other uh, involvement. No, no, not it only be here. Let's say if I give minus n, uh, what essentially I am doing is uh, I am just in the same interpretation, I removed the a column. That is what the interpretation is. Interpretation. Okay. Now I'm printing whatever is processed. Yes. So I'm not, I'm preventing the default printing. Okay. 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 So this is a easiest thing printing. So if I want only line one to 10, I can print like this. So now I can print like one to 19. Uh, but I gave only 10 lines because of the head. So it will print until the end. Okay. So very first CD thing when we wrote like I want to give two comma dollar D means that we want to delete all the lines except okay, okay. then we did not with a minus sign right. Yeah, yeah. That what okay. Yeah, that time uh, I haven't wrote any print command. Okay, what I wrote is two two dollar. D. So it has the default printing, right? So what I told is it takes the first line, print it. When it comes to when is the address range was two to end, remove the line. Don't do it. Okay, got it now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's why it gives only a first line. Okay. So one thing you have to notice. Uh, okay, I'll start. Uh, the uh, the append line. Uh, after first line, append something. Uh, F stands for append, which will come before the line. And I stands for insert. It says insert before before the specified line. So the dollar stands for the last line. So it's coming before the line which I specified the last line. Uh, if you give A, it will append a line. I mean, it's it's like whatever you give after it, it is the entire line. There is no constraint to it. Okay. So next uh, thing we have to see is for change line. C stands for change line. So it will change that line entirely. Okay. The first line was gone. It was entirely replaced. C stands for change or replacement. But the thing is, all A, uh, I, C, insert upon change, will not remove a line. Okay. Same thing. Uh, next, we going for the most useful thing, most used thing as well. Uh, instead, is a substitution. So, when I, what I'm going to do is 
uh, if I see a value named division, I am going to give a bracket into. So you can see here, right? Uh, in line four. So uh, you have understood this part, right? I mean, this ampersand refers to the pattern that matched in this part. Okay. Uh, any no doubt here, right? Okay. So now that I'm going to match with the pattern in that star, and I'm going to replace with now it will not remove the line but it will empty the line at the end uh, this substitution cannot remove a line okay so if we didn't give an address to it it will do for everything every line Other than that, standard substitution only. We can use G to substitute all. So I'll replace it. Uh, I replace the lower case E with upper case E. Now that I use this upper case command or something so, okay this operator will make whatever comes after it into uppercase here i give the ampersand symbol which is referring to whatever is matched here instead of i can put a grouping here and i can refer the group as well okay the output will be the same at the same time, you can like you can write multiple things. Now I am changing the A to up, lower case A to upper case. So you can write multiple set statement in a new line, or you can combine that with a semicolon. If you are using semicolon, you can write it in a single line. That also works. Sir, can you uh, explain this uh, syntax again? The regex yeah, syntax. Sir. Yeah. Okay, uh, this part, right? Yeah, actually, I okay. kind of struggle in regex actually, so that's why. Yeah. Okay, no issues. Uh, the thing is, uh, okay, the thing uh, here I am using basic regular expression. Okay, there are multiple regular expression there, but in our course we are using only basic regular expression and re extender regular expression. So if you backslash a parenthesis, let's say this it starts with backslash parenthesis. Okay? So whatever you are writing here inside, right? This is a group. We call it as a group. How group works is let's say when we want something like uh, a is equal to I I can name a variable and store something into the variable, right? Uh, in this general programming. Uh, so this is that's the same purpose the group does. If you put something in it, you are making the creating the first group. If you put something here, this is the second group. So whatever inside the group is a pattern. So here the pattern was A. Here the pattern was dot. Dot will match with any characters. So if I say yeah. uppercase the second group. Okay. So what it happens is, so whatever the matched pattern was A and a dot. Now that I'm making the up, uh, making that second pattern as uppercase. Okay. Note that uh, I am replacing this entire part. So the A will be gone. Or you can say 
अपर केस ये एंड प्राइस so the first group was a simple way the second group was a dot but the match was to be a followed by a dot so a any character after that so here what i am substituting is i am making the uh, first thing into upper case uh, first group into an upper case then i am replacing with the second uh, second group uh, so the thing is if you put something like uh, making something into upper case it will carry on for the next references that's why the m was made into a upper case so to prevent it you can do like this the same character was replaced by price uh no so, issues so sir here yeah. the one or two uh, it actually represent the first and second group right yes and sometimes we say like okay they should come only once so this this thing should come only twice the group thing so that we use it through uh, i mean how do we represent that is, yeah okay okay uh, one time two time that is like a that is a quantifier let's say uh, i'm going to do like any character okay any character that if it comes twice print it print only the line which have the character comes twice okay. this is i'll take five minutes Not that I, I'm going to write a regular expression here, and I'm printing. You can see here, in somewhere the same character appeared twice. Sorry, here, here I give the dot. I'll say, oh. if we see this Kurnool region, the O appeared twice. That's why this line was printed. Uh, we try a uh, dot with match with any characters. So otherwise, I can say a to z lower case that should appear twice. This is what the this is what you are referring to. Two times, I say more. Two or more. If you give a comma. Means two or more occurrences. Okay, uh, sir. One more thing here. Like, if I want to start, uh, like we used to mention as a line line number. Okay, to start uh, yeah. our control or cursor. Okay, so yeah. instead of line number, if I uh, provide any uh, text thing. Okay. So was like take from Andhra Pradesh to other like uh, different uh, some other line, Anandpur. Okay, okay, got it, got it. Between these so two texts, yeah, yeah. I, so you can uh, give there are the various there are different ways of addressing. Okay, one is by line number, like uh, one to four. Okay, another one is uh, like a regular expression. Okay, all lines uh, matching this regular. given regex okay if you give a simply one regex it will be like that if you give two regex uh, from regex from the line that matches the regex one to the line which matches regex two okay so it will print like that if you say uh, from line one to four right exact way from the line that matches the regex one till the line which matches the regex four. 
Okay, I'll show a demo for it. Uh, print everything from the line which matches like counter for this. Okay, I'm Till are not sure to do this. I should not give that because it's taking only 10 minutes. Uh, if you see here, uh, there is somewhere this Pradesh and uh, it started with the Pradesh and it finds some Arunachal Pradesh and until then it printed. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to force stop if the Arunachal Pradesh was found. So Q means if the pattern was matched, stop stop it. Okay, so that way this output will be much easier. Okay. So how it is worked? So how this thing, the last thing is worked? Quit. Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, why uh, in last? Okay. The thing is, uh, if I started, if I haven't given this, it will start for search for Andhra Pradesh. Let's say it is on first line. Then it find until the Arunachal Pradesh. Okay. It prints it. Again, it searches for Andhra Pradesh. It sees somewhere Andhra is there. Andhra Pradesh is there. It will start printing again. But until it finds Arunachal Pradesh again. It will never stop printing. Okay. So, so what I done is when Arunachal Pradesh was fine first time, first occurrence of line, it, so it's it's on first line, so it will print it. After printing that, and checking for the current line whether the Arunachal Pradesh is there. If it's there, quit it. I mean, simply stop it. So you can see the Arunachal Pradesh was here. Okay. So it started like, I mean, there are a lot of lines there, but it started somewhere with the Andhra, Andhra Pradesh. Okay. Uh, yeah, I can print the uh, number of lines here. <laughs> there are like 10,000 lines. Okay, yeah. So I can print the lines which have a much preparation. So is there any function like uh, we can pick the distinct uh, lines actually? Uh, like, like, I don't know what this has there. So if I want to see how many states are there in system. OK. So instead of printing multiple uh, uh, Multiple, I mean, multiple times Andhra Pradesh or whatever state. If I want to print only once, okay, each one, sir. Okay, so you want the distinct value. Distinct, right? correct. Yeah, distinct, okay. sir. Yeah. Okay, so just you can refer it here. I used a graph from the, the output which I got from cell. Okay, so I grabbed for the Andhra Pradesh. It's coming only once. Okay. It's the line number 10,800, sir. So that Andhra Pradesh. Never seen before. Okay. So now that we can see how to give a distinct output. So that is much easier if you use arc than in set. Okay. Okay. So 
now i now we'll go even without hawk okay so we can go with only with grab or cut and regular dash techniques okay so first i'll print everything uh, let's say i print the head only the top ten lines now we, we we have to understand the schema so you want let's say i'm going to get all the circle names okay distinct circles so uh, it is the first this is the first field so i can use z otherwise i can use cut as well that's so i'm saying the delimiter was comma and get the first field okay now that i got all the first field if i want unique i mean the distinct values i can use one command called it will print all the distinct value if it's a sorted list it will not print if it's a unsorted list okay. in that case if it's unsorted you have to sort it and take your link okay. now that i got all the certain Uh, did it does it answer your question uh, yes. uh, then we can do the same with the set as well set start with a comma and anything after that and remove it That will be the same result, just like that. Uh, yes, Jason, yeah. uh, to your question. Okay. So, so when you write a set, it's always like that. Uh, I mean, the substitution logic, it will be like a old, new, and some something like a, whatever the extra things. Like, if you want to match with a Case insensitive, you have to use I. A replace all means G. G means global. Okay. So if we are going to re replace the old with the new. This pattern will never change, but there are some uh, difference into it. But it depends on the program. In BI, you don't need to give the second part. If you give only yes with the initial part, the pattern part, uh, it will automatically assume that, let's say, okay, now that I'm using VI, right? So if I say yes, and if I say hatch I, okay, if I simply give enter, it will remove it. It assumes it's a delete operation. Uh, sir, I, I actually, I lost the track of these three sort and unique things, sir. Okay. Uh, so, uh, have you seen the cut part? Yes, sir. Okay. So, no issues. Uh, the thing instead we have to give like a, a substitution. Yes, stands for substitution. Okay. Yes, I haven't given any address so that it will substitute for every line if the pattern is matched. So the pattern I'm trying to match is a comma. There is a comma. After that, that could be any characters. So it's also a match with the longest pattern possible. Yes, sir. So it means it will take from the comma whatever things come and till go it it will go till end, right? Yes. Sir. Yeah. So if I just so because, want... yeah yeah because I need the first field, right? So I will remove the rest of the fields. So that's not a big issue for me. Right? Yes, sir. So if I do that, 
Uh, I'll remove this part, okay? See, uh, it will give all the So, but I I want to only the unique output so that I can say I can sort just remove this part. I can take the unique output. It will work. But uh, just one minute. Okay. Uh, I I did all this operation. Then I take only the unique values. But you can see here, right? The northeastern circle was coming twice. So it is not a unique value. Right? It is not a distinct values. Uh, Hari, are you able to get? Yes, I, I, yes, sir, I understood, sir. Yeah, thank you, sir. Okay. So the pro so pro the problem was. Uh, let's say if you see the man of the unique command, if you see this part, right, it report only the repeated lines. Uh, if you see the description, the adjacent matching lines from the input to the output, it filter only the adjacent lines. It will never care about the lines which is one before it or like that. If repeated and adjacent things are there, it will remove it. So in order to prevent that, so the efficient way of doing it is uh, you can do a sort after the unit and take a unit. Uh, why I'm saying sort after unit because uh, otherwise you have to sort like a 10,000 values. But if you take the unit and sort it and taking the unit again, then you have to Sort only the very few values compared to the entire lines. But otherwise, this full sorting also works. But, but sir, it's sort, a little expensive. But sir, uh, like see, unique you did, okay? You found the unique value. Fine. Yeah. You did the sorting. It will sort out the all the values. Then after yeah. that, unique you what difference it will make, sir? Okay. Uh, I sorted the value, but I haven't removed the values, right? I I took the unique. But it was like a, this northeastern state, northeastern circle was twice. So now I sorted it. So I got the sorted value, but I haven't removed it. Uh, okay, 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 okay. So in order to remove it, I'm using the unique again. Now that I can do it. Now it's removed. Got sir. So the problem, uh, one thing, now that I want the second value, okay, the second field, say, uh, how can I do it is like, if I do like this, what will be the output? What will be the field I am getting? So if you get the only first one, is it? No, I, I changed the regular expression. I put dot star and a comma. So it means like so you, uh, the, it will start from anything, any character. It yeah. will go and uh, it will find comma. Yes. Up to comma so, only it will find them. Yes. 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 So what is the field I will be getting? I think first field, right, sir? Uh, yeah. Can you check on which one is again? We'll, we'll check it. But okay. why it's false, first field uh, you are doing? Because I removed the first field, right? Dot star and a comma.
No, it's just, uh, we will see the output. So this is the field I am getting. So this is the value I am getting. Okay. So if you see what is this field is. I will take red one uh, to LinkedIn. This is the last field I am getting now. Yeah, okay, correct. Uh, why? Because I said dot star mean, right? Dot star mean the dot includes comma as well. So what it done is it took the first part. Uh, started from here and removed uh, until here. So it left me only the last field. Ah, uh, okay, sir. Oh, yeah, this is way. Okay. You got it right. So now I want the second field, not the last field. How can I get it? So there is some way I have to prevent. Uh, the comma, right? I mean, I don't want this dot to take the comma. Remove everything except comma. That is one way of character referencing. I will say remove that characters except comma. Then I can do some meaningful logic with it. So how can I do it is, uh, if you put a square bracket, it is a character sequence. But if you put a gap inside the square bracket, it will say negative of it, which is anything other than a comma. Yeah, negations. Yeah, got it. Yes. Okay. So I'm using a basic regular expression. So I'm, I have to escape plus to have the meaning like a one or more character. Otherwise, if I use, uh, Extend our regular expression, it is not needed. So now that what I have got is the second field till the last field. So now I can do like. Comma dot star image. Now that I got the second field, not entirely correct, but almost I got the second field. Okay, the second field is the region, right? See, uh, this. Second field is the region name. Uh, I got all the region names. But still, I if you see this Western region, it is not the entire region name. Uh, there are things about the uh, CSV file. If you want to specify a CSV, I mean, you have to give a co comma inside a CSV field, you can use double quotes. Okay. Here, uh, this is the second field. Okay. This entire part is the second field. This Tamil Nadu circle is the first field. This Western region, comma, Coimbatore is the second field. But as per my code, it is like this Western region is the second field. This Coimbatore is the like a third field. So that is strong, right? So how can I tackle those things?
So what can I do is, instead of removing from the comma, I can remove after the question mark. Or something like No, it's just, uh, okay. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to remove something from the comma and that value should not be a double quote. And it should be a plus. And uh, slash word, uh, that will refer to the dot, right? So the, the thing is, uh, we have two kind of cases. In some cases, we have the quotes. In some cases, we don't have a quotes. If it's a case which only have quotes, right? It is straightforward. I can replace like this. Like, I can replace like this. So all the cases which have quotes, will work like this then i can write one another thing if i do if i do like a again comma and top star it will remove again do the same thing 
But this case will totally box. I mean, I got the Western region currently. Okay. So now I have to handle the rest of the cases without affecting this case. So, so what can I do is just one minute. So what can we do is we have to get a case like this. So I have to specify the entire case like it can have double quotes. After that, it have like a non comma, it can have comma characters as well. And it have a double quote and it have a after it can be dot stop. It should be not. No, uh, I can drop it. So it can close it. I will remove everything and I will place only that part. Yeah. Sir, but only. sir, so, sir, does it mean like question mark means like zero or more times, right? Yes, zero or more times. Okay. Uh, because that question marks may be there or not, right? It can be there. Maybe it just it cannot be there. Either. So with said, what we can do is yeah. Uh, I can do one another thing. It is called like a within thing. Uh, if that's a match, like it starts with question. I mean, because I removed the entire part, right? So if it starts with a double quote, I can exit this part. I got this region. Okay. So now that if it starts with a comma, I'll remove everything. Comma dot star and I'll remove everything. Okay, this part on that. Okay, it will not start with a comma. Uh, it will start with anything other than the so that will be the value. Okay. Yeah. So now that I got the second field perfectly, not even perfect, I can remove this double code anyway. Yeah, I can this double code for all the okay. Now I got the second field perfectly. There is without losing any information. Uh, are you able to get it? Or otherwise, I'll explain the entire code once again as well. So whatever I have wrote here. So not completely, but we can move on, sir. It's OK. I think we have more. No, no, no. Uh, the thing is, no, no. if you are not able to understand this part, this is the kind of question you'll be asked in the exams as well, right? Yeah. Especially, I mean, not in the visa or something, but in programming exam, you need that. So the thing is, 
So here, what I am going to, what I am doing is, I write a command here. Remove first field. Okay. So, so the characters should not be a comma until you see a comma. Okay. So until you see a comma, that's the first field. Okay. So I removed the first field. So the second field, there is a case that it could be a quoted field. If it's a quoted field, so note that I removed the first field and a comma in it. So there is no first field. So the second field is the first field now. So that's the, the line start with the second field. So if it starts with a double quote, I am writing a group expression. Okay. I I'm matching with the entire line, but I'm matching with a I'm grouping something called starting with a double quote in between anything and ending with a double quote. After that, it could be anything. So the group catches only the quotes, quote. quote. Now I'm replacing the entire line with a group. So I can do it right like this as well. So I don't need to do this. Uh, then the comma will remove. Okay. okay. So this is the if case. Now I'm going for the else case. The else case is more like if it is not successful, right? So it's starting with any character other than double quotes. Then I am removing everything after a comma, including the comma. Yes, sir. Correct. Correct. Okay. But this is very much is uh, very much is uh, specific to the data. Correct, yes, sir. It's very much specific to data. Uh, it it won't apply everywhere. I mean, so just uh, specific to the data set we have. So yeah. We can accommodate the yeah. changes according accordingly. Yeah, that makes yes. sense. Yeah. Also, but uh, the thing is, you don't need to worry about this code and uh, double quotes and everything because when you load it with the Python CSV module, right? It takes care of all the, all those things. Ah, uh, yes, correct, sir. Correct. So, but when you want to do some raw text processing, you have to handle all those things. So we are not going to deal, go into the branching and all those things. So I don't want to complicate things, but this is how you can do it. First, all you have to know is if this pattern is matched, you are going to execute this block of codes. Like here I can write multiple uh, commands as well. Like here I can like, write insert code, code something. So you can see. Uh, this is where a quote was there. So I insert a, I will remove. So here there is a quote. That quote was not found. Sorry, it's not quote. The quote was fresh. So you can do something like a, a batch of commands within this flower bracket. Okay. This is the uh, thing you have to take it from here. Uh, we will we'll move on to the next thing. Uh, we'll go to the options. Yes, so I'm going to use the same data set. So this. Uh, any doubt in source so far? Sure, sir. Thank you. No, no. Uh, is there any doubt in sir? I'll complete yeah, that. Not, not, yeah, not, not yet, sir. Not yet, sir. Not yet. Yeah. Okay, I see. So, similar to yes, we can write the after. So, unless that. If we don't specify anything, ARC won't do anything. Okay, uh, that's one thing. So if you want to print something, uh, some re if there is a like a regular expression match or something, you can 
print like this. Uh, this is just equivalent to writing a regular block with print uh, dollar zero refers to the entire line. If you this is the full expression, okay. This is the writing a print all the lines which have the match Andhra in it. Okay. So this is the full way, but in short, you don't need the comma semicolon if it's a single command. Also, if you don't you don't need the dollar zero if you are printing the entire line, simply print will print the entire line. Also, you don't need the entire uh, this block if you are simply printing the entire line. Okay, now it becomes like a equivalent to writing like a grep statement. Now oh, these two commands are equal. So this is the column. So now we will see. Similarly, uh, like said, we can do something like a position based addressing things. Uh, but there is no from and to addressing in org. Okay. But you can mention that in via number of records seen so far, I'm going to print the lines which are less than 11 because I'm going to print only the 10, first 10 lines. Then if I give like this, it will print only the first 10 lines. Okay, this NR stands for number of records seen so far, which is a global thing. But uh, number of records seen so far means uh, in off we can instead of writing catch file can do like this. I can give multiple files as well. But you you are able to see the script two lines are not printed because uh, now nr refers to global value but if i say fnr you are able to see the values from script two as well fnr fnr means number of records seen so far in the current file i mean in the file uh, nr means simply overall so this is a very important thing we have to know. This is how you can differentiate between files. I mean, at least the uh, first file or second file, or first file or rest of the first file. If the value, like uh, in some case, fnr is equal to nr in first file, All files other than first. Okay. This is the core logic you can use in R with respect to uh, differentiating the first file and the rest of the file. And if you want to get the value of like a number of feet it has, you can print like, I'll open a block and print nr. So you can see the fields are varying here, uh, which is because uh, the field separator in arc was uh, simply white spaces. but what we have taken is a CSV file. Okay. So how can I give proper? So I can write a begin block. 
not then in if you are writing only the begin block how does not require standard input as well i can give a field separator like this you can write a regular expression now Okay, so I mean, just uh, just assume the get rid of the quoted values. Just we discard those things. Other than that, we can specify the field separator like. Uh, note that uh, when you are writing anything in a bash, let's say something, either it should be a command or it's a string, right? But when you are writing anything in or uh, in Python or any other language, it will be always a variable. It is interpreter always as a variable. Similarly, if you want to specify something as a string, you have to specify within a double quotes. Then only it becomes a string. Uh, if you didn't specify the double quote in it, it will become a variable. It is interpreted as a variable. Not the, so that's why the NF was a variable. It's a default variable. Sir, can you can you pass uh, I, uh, some variable from outside? I mean, can you see this example like taking variable from outside? Okay, okay. you want to yeah. get a variable from outside? Yes, exactly, sir. Yeah. Okay. So internally also you can define a variable like this. You can uh, you can print here. Okay. You see, for every line I define a variable in here and print it. Or even better. A equal to N. I defined the variable named A. I got the value of the N into it. I printed it. This is how you can do internally. Uh, from outside, you have even I have to refer the man to it. Okay, so you can use the value named hyphen e, the option called hyphen e to get the value. One, two, two, one, two, three. Now, if I refer it here. You can easily get the environment variable that is not issue. That you can have to use the environment. But if you want to get the argument, there is one way of it. So this is can be
okay so you can get a value from two arguments or this is what i am doing here okay we can pass value like this this is going here so it will take the first arc the value of zero is arc itself the second one is the file which we have provided but that is a the thing is it's based on placement Otherwise, what you can do is you can export some variable name like var one, two, three, and give a value to it. Now you can directly easily access it via environment variable. Environ. 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 I've now removed the discard. If you change any value, it will reflect here. Uh, does it solve your question? Uh, yes, sir. So this is two ways of doing one. You can the easiest way is you can export an environment variable and access it using the environment uh, default variable or associative array within the org. Otherwise, you can use the arg b uh, to get the value from the fast argument. So that one another thing you can do is there is a one another thing called arg c that will give only the number of argument passed. So that you can use this value along with the r for loop. I'm starting one. Now you can use the R B B type. So now that we won't get any issue. There won't be any error. Uh, this error is because of R trying to read the file, which is not present. But within code, there is no error. You got everything, every argument here. Uh, one thing about the uh, org languages, uh, when you are using a for loop, this parenthesis is mandatory. In bash, it is not required. In bash, you can say for I win. Uh, yeah. And do then we can do like that. Uh, but but in org, this is mandatory. This goes for if else. You have to write a parenthesis to so validate. Uh, the easiest way you can easily get the field using dollar one. Dollar one refers to the first field. Dollar two refers to the second field. This is much easier. Uh, uh, when you cut, use with set to extract the field or even cut in cut you can define only one single character as a field separator but here you can define a regular expression pattern to it okay so here you can if I'm a regular expression, either quote or comma is a field separator.
So here, uh, if you want to do some regular expression matching, then you have to use like. So now that I wrote a field separator based on regular expression, I'm going to match. If if the if the line contains or uh, a double quote. So I am printing only the second field. Now, what have I defined is either double quote followed by a comma. Or, or a comma followed by double quote or simply comma. These are the field separator. So that it is, it got the field in the comma itself here. So this is how you can just yes, I will the comment. So I can you can filter out easily with this part. You can do a full it is this is equal unto writing and error block. Or if you want to replace with like a the last regular expression matching on field nine and but print field two. So I am printing every region in the state of carry. Okay. I hope this is helpful. And uh, one uh, a mistake we do is. If you wrote like this, this is a wrong statement uh, because when you write begin, you have to start the curly braces on the same line itself. Okay. So Otherwise, it, it, is, it will fit differently. Now, if I write like this, now this is considered as a separate block. This is considered as a separate block. Okay. Then only it becomes similar. If I wrote like this, then only it becomes similar block. So as we said, the beginning block does not require any standard input. Uh, the value of n, uh, nr at the end, is the number of lines so far. Okay. Uh, this file contains uh, 19,253 lines. You can verify it here. Uh, I think I explain all the basics with R. So, very important thing with respect to exam. Uh, whenever the question is asked to ask you to write the awk script or set script, you should not write the bash scripts. Okay, so you have to write like this. If the first, if the question was if the problem statement was asked you to write a awk script. Then it's you have to write only this. Okay. So this is very important thing. I mean, similarly for set, but if it if it asks you to write a bash script, then you can write a entire bash script. Yeah, that's all from my set. Uh, anything else? Uh, if there isn't anything, if there isn't anything, we can find out this question as well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all. If you have any questions, please post it on this post. I'll try to answer it as soon as possible.